hello viewers welcome to this video in this video we will be looking at the november 2020 science paper 2 question b8 question b8 reads urea and ammonium nitrate are two nitrogenous fertilizers commonly used by farmers urea and ammonium nitrate are two nitrogenous fertilizers commonly used by farmers a. Calculate the percentage composition of nitrogen in urea. Calculate the percentage composition of nitrogen in urea. So here we are calculating the percentage composition. Okay, we are calculating the percentage composition in urea, which is this compound. So, uh, First and foremost, we need to know what percentage composition is. So this percentage composition is just basically the ratio of the mass of, uh, in this case, nitrogen, the mass of nitrogen divided by the mass of the whole compound, which is urea, multiplied by 100%. So uh, we can uh, say that percentage composition is equal to mass of element in the compound divided by mass of compound multiplied by 100%. So this is the formula for calculating percentage composition. However, uh, what we first need to know is actually calculate the mass, the total mass of the compound, which is uh, urea. So to do that, we are going to say CO, open bracket, and H2, 2. So here, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and finally carbon so uh, since we have brackets here so hydrogen inside the brackets we have two two multiplied by the two outside the brackets gives us four so we have four atoms of hydrogen multiplied by what is the relative atomic mass for hydrogen it's one so this gives us four uh, we come to nitrogen nitrogen they are two uh, atoms of nitrogen multiplied by 14 which is the relative so we're going to have 2 times 14 it's 28 we come to oxygen we only have one atom times 16 which is 16 then we have carbon one atom multiplied by 12 which is 12 then we add all this so when we add 4 plus 28 plus 16 plus 12 uh, we can either cut these into numbers that we can easily add or we just use a calculator directly so i will first start by saying 28 plus 12 will give me 40 all right then 16 plus 4 will give me 20 so 20 plus 40 gives me 60 so this is Sikisti. So the total mass of this compound is sikisti. The total mass of the compound is sikisti. However, we want uh, the percentage composition of nitrogen. So we are going to get the mass of nitrogen in the compound, which is this part, which is 28. So what we are going to now say is, we are now going to say that percentage composition, percentage composition, is equal to 28 over 60 multiplied by 100 percent so there should be a percentage there it's only that I'm unable to write there there should be a percent at the end there on the hundred so 28 divided by 60 28 divided by 60 so 28 divided by 60 is equal to 0 0.46666 then multiply that by a hundred 
so this gives us 46.66 so 46.7 percent 46.7 percent 46.7 so we have 46.7 percent so that is a percentage composition so uh, urea uh, is 46.7 percent nitrogen 46.7 percent nitrogen all right we proceed to b b is saying explain explain the importance of nitrogenous fertilizers in agriculture so the key word is nitrogenous which is nitrogen uh, we look at the importance of nitrogen in agriculture. So nitrogenous fertilizers uh, actually are, give, give nitrogen as one of the major sources uh, nutrient in, to the soil and eventually to the plant. So what are the, uh, the importance of these fertilizers? What is the importance of having nitrogen? Uh, given to the to the plants all right so uh, in short uh, what we can say about nitrogen is that nitrogen is very important in protein synthesis so it is important in the manufacture of proteins in plants okay so uh, and when we have proteins uh, it means that it enhances plant growth okay so they are important in protein synthesis so they are important in protein they are important in in protein synthesis they are important in protein synthesis so or they provide nitrogen which is in, uh, important in protein synthesis so they provide maybe let's say they provide nitrogen which is important in protein synthesis so uh, they provide they provide nitrogen which is important important for protein synthesis which is important for protein synthesis we go to see describe the effects of using nitrogenous fertilizers on the environment three max Ooh, three max and when we look at the space given there for the three max a very small space meaning that we we'll, we really need to bring out three valid almost three valid points there uh, however all right so uh what happens uh, when these fertilizers are used by farmers, when these nitrogen fertilizers are used by farmers, is that uh, some of some of the uh, nitrogenous fertilizers or the nitrates are actually taken away, are washed away by let's say rain waters, and they eventually find themselves in in water bodies such as rivers. And in those rivers, they actually uh, provide nitrogen to, to, to water weeds, okay? Uh, now, what happens is when these water weeds uh, uh, get the nitrogen, they grow rapidly and eventually cover the river. Now, what is that called when... Uh, a water weed uh, covers the river it is called eutrophication eutrophication and what actually this 
uh, turns out to be is that when these water weeds die, bacteria start actually feeding on these water weeds. And as these bacteria do this, they actually uh, use oxygen, which is dissolved in the water, okay? Hence, reducing the uh, oxygen content of the rivers, therefore depleting the amount of oxygen that is given that fish and other aquatic life have access to. So describe the effects. So they cause, they cause eutrophication. Eutrophication, which then reduces uh, oxygen levels levels in rivers and lakes so the that is what they can do to the environment. The other is that some of these nitrates are converted to nitrites, which eventually find them, their, themselves in, in our drinking water. Now, when we take in these nitrates, they have a negative effect on our bodies. Uh, when they enter our bodies, they will combine with hemoglobin, which will in turn uh, reduce or minimize the amount of oxygen that the blood carries. Uh, uh, it is more lethal in children, growing, who, growing children, uh, for they will start having uh, challenges and their skin color changes. All right, let's go to D. D, apart from nitrogen, name an element needed for root development so for root development the element that is needed for root development is actually phosphorus so here it's phosphorus phosphorus and two seed formation uh, phosphorus is yeah it's needed for root development uh, then for seed formation we have potassium potassium okay uh, if there is a reduction in the amount of potassium in a plant we find that fruits will grow very slowly and may not actually uh, reach uh, the desired fruits the the maximum fruit size that a given fruit is supposed to have therefore uh, it is very important. Even ripening, fruits tend to take longer to ripen when they have a deficiency in, in potassium. Otherwise, thank you very much, viewers. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button. See you next time.